Hey guys, I'm going to get my friend. Bye. Bye. It's a very rainy day to come visit the farm. Mayhem has um, kind of a goopy backside and her udder is getting really swollen. My friend Amanda is flying in from California. She will be here in about an hour and a half. I'm about to leave to head to the airport. I've been really hoping that Mayhem would hold out and not have kids until Amanda got here. As long as she doesn't do it in the next few hours, I think I've made it. Love you. Love you too. It is a really dreary afternoon. Uh, it's very wet and cool. I'm very excited to have her here. We're gonna have a really good time. You may have heard me say this before and you probably will again, but airport like reception areas where people come down and see their loved ones, probably one of my favorite places to just sit and people watch. I love watching people and uh, the people watching here is very good. I just got the text that she has landed so I'm sitting down here watching the screen. Our airport is like tiny. Not as tiny as some of the ones I've been to but very very small so um, I got here right before her landing time. I think she's probably about to walk, walk out this way. There she is! <laughs> I'm going to have a little local food since I've got a guest in. You know your mom's going to be watching. Oh, so. I know. My mom, my husband, my yeah. mother-in-law, everyone. All of the people who made it possible for her to come. So I've introduced you guys to Amanda. It's the next day. We we're home from the airport and all of that. Had our first night where we stayed up really late. And we've had a good day running errands, not having to take care of kids yeah. for her, which is like super vacation. <laughs> we're down in the garden now and I want to show you guys some stuff because my sprouts are finally making their way up. Okay, so there's our French breakfast radishes. And over here, the peas have finally decided to poke their little heads up. You see them going all the way down there. My green flesh radishes are all coming up and I was kind of giving up hope on the thought that I might get some lettuce and then Amanda pointed out this one lone sprout. So maybe, maybe they'll come up. Beets are looking really good. They're in the middle. I don't know if you can kind of see those there. This, what is this? I forgot. Oh, white borage. I did direct sow this. We were just talking about this. <laughs> and here the thousand head kale is looking good coming up in multiple places. Y'all hear those birds? Sounds like spring. Starting to look a little like it too. We're going to go through my seeds tonight and I'm going to figure out what else we can direct sow. Getting a lot of stuff finished out in the greenhouse. I mean, I've got to, I've got to nail down a plan for what I'm planting where because actually the shindig with the plant cell is two weeks before, like a week and a half before my last frost. Usually I plant everything and then sell whatever's left over. But since the plant cell is taking place before I can actually plant everything, I have to make a, a real plan. And um, that's hard for me because that means I have to make these decisions. <laughs> Amanda was impressed by how sweet kale gets here where it actually gets cold. <laughs> Best kale I've ever eaten. Yeah, it's not like that in California. No, <laughs> it, it get is that not. Sweet? No, never. I think this Ragged Jack or uh, Red Russian kale might be the best kale I've ever eaten. It's really sweet. Aren't these pansies wonderful? They've made it all the way through the winter. They've been snowed on and iced on and they're still happy and smiling. Today we were admiring how voluptuous this lavender Orpington is. Look at her. <laughs> posing. I know, she's so fluffy. King. This mixed barred rooster I've had forever. I've showed him to you guys before with his massive spurs. And for the longest time, he was just a spare rooster that wandered the property and we finally put him in with the hens and he is such a good boy. If you've never experienced a bad rooster before, you might not have the proper appreciation for a good one. But we used to have these two Lavender Orpington roosters and they were like really, really well-bred chickens. We got them from these great lines. We were gonna do this whole like show quality breeding line. Anyway, they were the meanest roosters in the world. 
like I had to go gather eggs with a one by four because they were so, so viciously mean. Well, one day we woke up and we had this chicken coop over here in the woods. It's different than it is now. But we woke up and came out, Jeremiah came in and he said, Jess, um, half the chickens in that coop are missing, but they were there last night. We come out, we look for signs of struggle. Someone had come in and stolen all of our really nice birds. It was somebody that knew that what they were doing because they actually like unlocked the chicken coop and opened it and over 25 chickens were missing overnight. Absolutely nuts. And they stole all of the like really good breeds of chickens, the colorful layers, the lavender Orpingtons, Jubilee Orpingtons. To this day, I still get a little bit of pleasure when I think about the fact that those thieves that would steal chickens ended up with the world's meanest roosters. <laughs> it just feels like a little bit of justification for that awful thing that they did because those roosters were truly awful and those people really kind of did deserve them. Look at that pretty girl with her top hat. <laughs> that fluffy butt. This is me always eating after everyone else is done. No, this isn't morning, this is evening. We can go milk the goats in the morning. Why do you want to milk the goats? Because. Because why? Because I want to watch them. You want to watch me? Come on, get down. You want to go check on the goats? You want to see if Mayhem's had her babies yet? She's over there by the hay feeder. She's looking large. This is one wide load right there. Well, she's pregnant too, but no Mayhem's standing up. Yeah, yeah. Does she look like she's about to have her babies? Yeah. Golly, look at her. I feel like her udder may have gotten bigger just since this morning. I still feel ligaments. Yeah, I still feel ligaments, but I just can't imagine we've got much longer on her. Kitten George. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Kitten George is looking particularly majestic right now. You sweet can boy. I give give... her a hug because she's sick. She's not sick. She's just about to have babies. That doesn't make them sick. Yeah. Sick and tired of being pregnant. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's the kind of sick she is. Sick and tired of being pregnant. <laughs> It's always when we refresh the water, Bear takes a little dip in it. No, I don't want you to come love on me. I'm done with you right now. Went and got some more soil to repot. There's so much to do in the greenhouse right now. Seriously, so much to do. We separated out some flowers earlier, but we still have like, I don't know, like six more things of flowers to separate and a whole bunch of peppers, but I had to go get more potting soil and Maya moved the grow shelf back out. I'm going to put all the peppers back inside. Um, I really think that putting them on the heat mat with the lights is gonna be my best choice. I've considered bringing the lights and the heat mats out here to the greenhouse, but for now, I'm just out of space. Until the window greenhouse is done, I think I'm gonna have to move those back in the house. Here's my new little artichoke plant that Amanda brought all the way from California. I'm pretty sure that that's why her legacy got searched. She had it in this little picture with a can over top of it, but. I'm just gonna do just fine. I'm gonna keep it in the greenhouse for now because it's still a little cold for him, but he'll perk back up. So every time Amanda's walked in, she takes a deep breath because how good it smells in it here. It is the best smell. It's a green living smell. Yeah, it does. It smells a lot like tomato plants and soil in here. I've got seedlings pretty much all over the floor. These are different things we separated today. And of course, the shelves are just at capacity. They're all covered. But moving the pepper trays, there's some, there's some more up here. Should empty out enough space. And actually, like I said, we're gonna go through the seeds this evening or in the morning and I've got to figure out what else I need to start that I want to grow in my own personal garden. I've been so focused on plant cells that I sort of spaced out on some stuff that I should have done by now. But it's okay, still have time. I have a gloriously long growing season, 
but uh, yeah, it's definitely time to do that. I wanted to tell you guys, I almost forgot to, but I wore this t-shirt today to remind me. <laughs> um, I'm wearing my shirt for my friend Morgan over at Goldshaw Farm. He has a YouTube channel. If you've been around here very long, you've probably heard me mention him or collaborate with him before. I love his farm, his channel, he's an excellent video maker and also has a really cool farm up in Vermont. Uh, the Frigid North, which is like another world to me. <laughs> However, uh, he just started a podcast and I had the honor of being his first guest, as well as White House on the Hill and So the Land. Uh, he's already got three episodes up. Definitely go check it out. It's available all over places that podcasts are available. I should know that. iTunes, uh, Spotify. I'll link it down below uh, so you can know the actual information. So I should know that, but I don't. Anyway, Definitely go check it out. We did a nice long episode, had a chat, it was awesome. Um, and I really think this is going to be an excellent resource for those of you who have like any homestead dream in whatever capacity. Morgan has an incredible gift in communicating with people and just highlighting their dreams. And I think it's just gonna be a really cool thing to be able to listen to. Definitely check it out. Full shelves. Now, we're gonna spend a good bit of time in here in the next few days, I believe. <laughs> Be careful, please. I'm ready to get down there. Uh. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I am sure you are going to get to see more of Amanda. Hopefully, you'll get to see some baby goats soon. I think it's close, I really do. But you know, I don't know. They always keep me on my toes. Uh, I bless you guys, until next time.